All right, beautiful people, welcome to another episode. In this episode, we're going to be flashing back to this summer, and we're going to be doing a review of a kayak I've actually always wanted to give a try. We're going to be reviewing the 17-foot Neki plastic boat. So this is a rotomolded Neki kayak. A friend of mine has one. Actually, a couple of friends of mine have them. And uh, they seem like a really good way to get into kayaking if you are on a budget and if you, you know, want to try it out and get out on the water. And it's kind of a risk-free investment. Um, I see these things being traded online for on the order of five, six hundred dollars uh, pretty much all the time. And they last forever. So um, we'll get one out on the water and I'll show you guys what it's all about. All right, I'll see you at the end of the video. This is a Neki Luxia kayak. It is 17 and a half feet long and about 25 inches wide. It's about nine inches deep right behind the cockpit here. So this kayak is a great kayak for people who are just getting into touring kayaks. A lot of people call them pinkies or neckies. Um, and they are rotomolded kayaks made by a company called Neki out of the Pacific Northwest. Now, Neki went out of business in 2017. They've actually been around since the 1970s, and they were absorbed by a company called Old Town Canoes and Kayaks. So you can still get models that are very similar to this one right here. This is a touring kayak, which means it'll do great in terms of cutting through the water, and going long distances. It won't do so well at, you know, short windy areas, um, rough waters that are like whitewater rafting and things like that. But if you wanna get out on the ocean, you wanna go island hopping, you wanna go touring out in, you know, big open water, then this might be the boat for you. One of the key features of this boat is the sharp rocker and really, proud bow at the front of the boat, coupled with the soft chine here along the side, leading into a really narrow tail at the back. The boat features a rudder, as well as all the deck rigging you would expect, and handles for carrying. On the deck, you have really large hatches for fitting your camping gear. And these storage compartments are really big. And there are nice solid foam bulkheads that are glued in all the way around. The cockpit features a really comfortable foam seat that is very adjustable, along with adjustable thigh braces and adjustable foot pegs. The foot bags control the rudder that is at the back of the boat. Some of the newer models from Old Town Canoes and Kayaks feature things like cup holders, phone holders, and smaller day storage right in front of the cockpit. But this boat, while a little bit older, still has plenty of features. You can store a lot of stuff under these bungees on the deck. You've got your bow lines in case you need to get back in your boat. And again, another generous storage compartment in the back. Looking at the underside of the boat, you'll see that it has a very sharp prow for cutting through the waves. It does have a bit of a chine for good secondary stability and a nice flat bottom for newer paddlers so that you can stay stable out on the water. Rotomolded boats, as opposed to say fiberglass boats or composite boats do have their issues. Uh, they tend to be a little bit heavier. This boat probably weighs in north of 60 pounds and uh, under certain heat conditions, if they get too hot while they're being stored, uh, the hull can deform a little bit. So you do have to be careful. It's best to store them in the shade um, and it's also good to, you know, make sure that you rotate these boats periodically throughout the winter or else they might develop flat spots. Now the cockpit does have a really nice um, rounded combing that'll, you know, help hold your skirt really well. 
And another thing is it kind of has this drain area here so that water as it comes over the deck, it'll go under the combing and then spill down off the side of the boat. One issue that I have with the cockpit is that all of the adjustability means that there are all these straps kind of hanging out inside of the boat. And the only thing that gives me a little bit of concern is if you did roll over, getting tangled up in some of those straps as you were trying to get out in a hurry. The tide's coming in. Let's get this boat out on the water and then I'll give you my final thoughts at the end. Now, just in terms of sitting in this boat, I feel like I could sit in this boat for hours. Um, and really the the issue that I feel about it is that you would be sitting in it for hours if you were trying to cover any kind of distance. And that's because this boat is really wide. And it's not just that the boat is wide, it's that the boat is wide for a long time. So, this boat really wants to resist that forward motion that comes so easily in a narrower and smaller and lighter boat. Now the rocker does probably alleviate some of that and give the boat a smaller profile than I think in the water. And unfortunately, I don't have my GPS so I can't measure how fast I'm actually going. But I definitely feel like I'm working a lot harder than I normally work in getting this boat to move. I'll have to try and get my phone out here in this boat in the next couple of days so that I can give you guys an accurate measure. But I can definitely feel it in my shoulders. Now that said, we're out in Penn Cove and it isn't the smoothest day, but the waves really are not bothering me at all. This boat's staying nice and flat, despite any possible disturbances. I don't have to work at all to keep it balanced. So it's nice and stable. It's got really good primary balance, and I can get it up on edge. It doesn't, it doesn't really like it. I gotta work for it, but I can definitely make it happen. Now the cockpit does again, it has a really nice locked in feel. I feel like I'm attached to this boat. And again, it is definitely hard to get this boat to change direction. I can if I use the rudder, but I mean, you really need to use the rudder if you're using the rudder for steering. And getting the boat up on edge doesn't really I mean there's so much surface area on the bottom. It seems like it just grabs on and wants to hold, hold the boat flat. You can find these boats for as little as $300. And that gets you into, you know, a little nine or 10 foot boat that you can buy at Walmart type territory. And for 300 bucks, I could definitely see adding one of these to my stable not even for me necessarily, but more for times when I want to get newer paddlers out on the water and, you know, kind of showing people why I do this. A boat like this is definitely a nice gateway to that experience. Despite all my emotionally complaining, this boat checks a lot of boxes for me. It is 
wonderfully comfortable. It is stable. And did I mention it's comfortable? I mean, the seat in this boat is amazing. So, uh, yeah, no, this is actually a really nice boat. It's a great boat and they're cheap. So, as you can see, this is a great all around touring kayak. It does have its drawbacks. It is huge. This boat is 17 feet long. So you're going to need to have a way to move it around. I'm thinking roof racks um, or just live close to the water. If you live someplace like Whidbey Island where you've got big open spaces to go paddle in, then I would definitely put this on my short list. If you live someplace where there's nothing but whitewater rapids, then yeah, no, this is not the boat for you. That said, at 17 and a half feet long, you are going to need either a roof rack or a truck as your method for transporting this boat. Um, looking online, I've seen these boats for as low as $300 and as much as $1,500. If you buy them new from Old Town Canoes and Kayaks, they run about $1,600 to $1,800 depending on which model you get and with what attachments and accoutrement. All right, beautiful people. I hope you enjoyed that look at the Neki. Um, if you get a chance to pick one of these up and you live someplace where there's any kind of open water that you can get out on, um, I definitely suggest that you do pick it up. Uh, it's a lot like a family station wagon, but it's comfortable. I mean, it's a comfortable place to sit and it's big and it's flat and it's stable and you can get out on the water and really just relax and enjoy yourself. Um, so my recommendation is if you see one at a good price, pick it up. Okay. I see a lot of people going to, you know, they go to the big box stores and they pick up a $300 boat that's, you know, eight or nine feet long, nine or 10 feet long, somewhere in there, like a short little boat. And yes, it's stable and they get out on the water and it's the type of thing that people use a couple of times and then they put it in their garage and they never take it out again, right? Or they take it out once a year. Um, if you live someplace where you can get out on the water on a regular basis and you want something that you're going to actually use and enjoy, I definitely recommend a nice used boat like a pinky, like one of these neckies. Um, I recommend it so much that I actually picked up a kind of cousin of that boat as you guys can see here i picked up a fiberglass version of the boat that i just reviewed for you guys um this one's a little bit shorter uh it's more 16 feet um a lot lighter because it's fiberglass but uh it's made by you know it was made by necky and it was made around the same time and i actually got it for a steal i'll be doing a review of this boat later on in the season so um, again, I hope you guys get out on the water. If you guys see a boat like that, pick it up and just, you know, use it and enjoy it. And, uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video.